Food shortages are looming once again. The prices of food are still going up. Prices are not coming down. The products that are available are starting to be hit or miss. And you also have to deal with the choice between buying fresh food or frozen or canned. Depends on the area that you live in. Depends on the availability and also depends on the quality of those different products. You still have to realize we still have a 10 shortage going on. So that is inhibiting a lot of the different products that go into 10 cans. A lot of the fresh vegetables, a lot of people have been reporting, are pretty good in their stores. Other people, though, are also reporting that they're not so good in their stores. They've been buying more of the frozen in the can because they are better quality and cheaper than the fresh produce that they have on the shelves that looks like it was picked six months ago. I have a few scenarios here that I want to run by you to make sure that if you are looking to start putting up food, if you're looking to try to uh, maximize your dollar amount because of the inflation, the recession, because of the economic chaos that is taking place in this country. Everything is coming in. Everything is against us. And we have to try to fight our way through everything to make sure that we can survive. What I would highly suggest is, number one, while you're doing your shopping and everything else, make sure that you are checking out all the different apps that are out there for all your local stores. Maybe you get a Sunday paper and you still get flyers in this thing. Check it out, do your homework, see who has the best prices. Number two, make sure that you have some way to store a lot of these products if you're going to maximize a lot of good deals to try to put some food up through the winter. Number three, if you're going to try to maximize on a meat deal, you want to try to put meat up for the winter. You need to get out and you need to go on and you need to buy yourself a vacuum sealer. You've seen me use my vacuum sealer several different times. If you go onto my Amazon storefront, I have vacuum sealers on there. They're great. That's what you want if you're going to be putting meat up. You vacuum seal those meats, you put them in your freezer, and those things are going to last you a year plus. Period. End of conversation. It'll get you through the winter into next summer. If you get a really good deal on meat. Number four, if you're buying dry goods and this type of stuff, especially like, you know, flour and rice and this type of, you know, those type of goods, Make sure you're buying in bulk. And this way here you can split it up into manageable packs, however you want to do it. I would highly suggest that you use a Marlar bag. And this way here, it's going to last you for a quite a long time when you're doing your flour and your rice. All right. Now with your sugar, you don't have to put oxygen absorbers in your Marlar bag, but it'll still extend the life out years. Yes, Mylar bags do cost a lot of bit of money. You also have to sit back and realize, all right, you're paying a lot of money for those products. And if you're buying them in bulk and you want to stockpile some of this stuff for a long time, unless you have special containers that you can use these in, I would highly suggest that you use Mylar bags if you're going to be putting up your dry goods for a long period of time if you want to make sure that they are going to last. Your meats need to be vacuum sealed. Now, if you do know how to can, you can can a lot of your meats. I do not know how to can, but I do know if you go on YouTube and you search that, you're going to find a lot of channels on canning and how they can meats. It can be done. I, I've seen people can all different types of meats from steak to chicken to sausage, the whole nine yards. The videos are out there. They walk you right through it. And it looks very simple to do. It's just I don't have time and I don't have the space. 
Uh, what space I do have is full of all my other preps and everything else. So the last thing on this list is if you wanted to buy freeze-dried foods. If for some reason you do not feel that you can find a good enough deal or if you feel more secure having something that's going to last already to go for 25, 30 years, um, that is definitely an option. Just remember that's going to cost you the most. But in the end, the product is already done. All you have to do is open it up. Most of the time, all you have to do is add water. And this way here, you got a full meal. All your nutrients and everything are already in those meals. So it's not like you have to worry about having canned goods. You don't have to worry about having um, pastas or rice. You don't have to worry about having meats and all this kind of stuff. It's already all in there. It's just another option for you so that you can be prepared because these food shortages and stuff and the prices and everything else are not going to be going away anytime soon, folks. Unfortunately, I cannot sit here and give you a time frame on that, but just look what's going on. I mean, it's just getting worse and worse. Uh, we haven't even got the inflation under control yet in which if they keep raising these interest rates the way they're going, nobody's going to be buying new cars. Nobody's going to be able to uh, buy homes. Um, forget about using your credit cards because it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. So if you are one of these people that have run up that credit card, try to pay that thing down and get it paid off because the higher these things go, the more you're going to be paying and the longer it's going to take you to pay it off. So the quicker you can get out of that credit card debt, the better off that you are going to be and your family is going to be. Use your credit card as a backup for an emergency type situation. Say if something happened and your car broke down or if you needed emergency groceries for whatever, a hurricane like what's coming to town around here at some point in time. You know, there's one brewing out there right now and they're saying it's coming up this way here in Florida. We'll have to wait and see. And, um, you know, I'm shooting this video on Saturday, so maybe I'll be doing a live stream come Wednesday when this video comes out and be like, hey, we got a hurricane. <laughs> here we go. The key is here, folks, you got to stay ahead of the game. You got to use your head and you got to make sure that you're making smart decisions on your money at this point in time. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I really do appreciate it. Remember, if you guys are looking for any of these type of goods, if you need Mylar bags, if you need a vacuum sealer, go to my Amazon storefront. It's all right there. You don't have to buy the one that I have in there. You can look and see what I have in there. Then go buy, your, buy whatever you want, wherever you want to go. But it just gives you ideas on my Amazon storefront of some of the products. And this way here... If, you, if that's too expensive for you, you're on a tight budget or whatever else, there are different models out there. Just go and search for it and you'll find what you're looking for. But you need to make sure that you do have a vacuum sealer for that meat because that's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. So until next time, folks, I hope everybody stays safe. You keep prepping. Hopefully, one of these days, things will get back to normal. I don't see it anytime soon, so we have to stay the course and keep our preps up. So until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.